I started doing a little research, and what I found was that the African-American experience in the Bronx was completely off the radar screen of historians of the Bronx and historians of black life in New York City. The area that um, we're primarily talking about, Morrisania, became a destination for many people from Harlem uh, initially. Uh, then they came from other, um, other boroughs as well. But initially, uh, the people of African descent came from Harlem. I was very enthused about it because a lot of people had the wrong perception of life growing up in the Bronx. I thought it was really important that people learned about families that lived there. I interviewed a former student of mine named Victoria Archibald Good, who grew up in the Patterson houses in the South Bronx in the 50s and 60s. She told this amazing story of when public housing was a great place to live, when all these people of different cultural traditions were sharing their cultures, when there were wonderful programs in the schools. The advent of drugs in, in the Bronx kind of took over, and it wasn't a safe place to live at a certain point. But prior to that, it was a very harmonious community. I remember there was a drug store on the corner. There were candy stores. When you talk about racism and uh, discrimination, a lot of it is based on ignorance. So certainly a, a project like the Bronx African American History, which tells the story of people of African descent, um, it gives those people the opportunity to learn more about the experiences of, of this group of people that are very similar to their experiences, whether they be, you know, Italian, Jewish, uh, Irish, because I think oftentimes people think their uh, histories are so unique and there's no comparison, but there is, because the Bronx is coming back. It is now a destination uh, for many people for various reasons. But so I think it's important that a, a project like this um, exist. When I started uh, this project, I knew about hip hop in the Bronx. I didn't know that Bronx, the Bronx had an amazing jazz tradition. I didn't know about the, the doo-wop tradition. So what we're finding is that you have many different genres of music created in the same community because you have people from different cultural traditions. You have African Americans, Puerto Ricans, West Indians, Jews, Italians, all living together and sharing. And that mixture of cultures contributes to cultural creativity. Growing up in the South Bronx, Fordham University was like on another planet. You had the, the scholars from Fordham and the students on one side, and you had community researchers in the other. So we always had people in the community who were integrally involved in recruiting interview subjects, helping us do the interviews. In the minds of many people um, from the community that I grew up in, um, for them to have learned that Fordham has taken this interest and taken it seriously has certainly changed, you know, the perception of Fordham University as not just being an, you know, elitist, you know, institution of higher learning in another part of the Bronx, but now that one has a connection to the history uh, or the interests of certain people in other parts of the Bronx.